Good morning, YouTubers. It's NASCAR Man 3345 for our midday break room show with our two sidekicks today. Uh, Tommy's going to be probably pop popping in later on. Uh, Mr. Anthony Pittsburgh and uh, Landshark Picker, Mr. Craig. Anthony, why don't you say good morning to everyone? Hey, what's up, everyone? My name's Anthony. I have a YouTube channel called Pickburg. I do a lot of yard sale, garage sale, estate sale, Goodwill bins, anywhere I can go, buy stuff super cheap, and flip it on eBay for a profit. That's what I do. Uh, I also have a Bible study I do weekly on my channel. Uh, it's every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. So if that's your thing, feel free to come and join us today at 2 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be reading John chapter 10 today. Awesome. And that's, and that's 2 o'clock Eastern, right? 2 o'clock Eastern. Correct. All right, Mr. Craig, you're up. <clears throat> hey, my name is Craig. Channel is Land Shark Picker. No D in front of it. Um, here in the great state of Alabama, if you're considering moving to Alabama, go ahead and squash that. Uh, there's no more room for resellers in Alabama, so uh, <laughs> do that. Uh, sell on eBay, Amazon, and Facebook Marketplace. Source all the normal avenues of source that everybody else does outside the Goodwill bins because our closest bins are either three hours north or three hours south. So glad everybody can make it back in today. I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, we are going to have a great show today. Today's some topic, which we don't we go on to it for a little while, but uh, we really want to help everybody get into it and get the chat moving. Um, is how do we handle change? But before we hit that, I want to be able to welcome everybody in the chat today. Of course, Swamp Picker being the first one. Go in and we have Anthony. We have Rebecca Cruder, um, LSP, Debbie DeSales. Good morning. Gate City Picker, Mr. Paul. Good morning. Uh, Star City Picker, DC Cells. Hey, uh, good DG Picker, good morning. Jordan, you're awake. I need to talk to you later, so please hit me up later. Siosa Cells and everybody else has come in in if we haven't if we missed you. So, all right. Yeah. So, what, are we, what do you think on how do you handle change either through eBay, YouTube, or just in general? I, I prefer to get folding money instead of change. It's a lot easier to manage. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I always make the joke that the only thing uh, constant in our world is, is change. You know, it, it's it's tough. You know, it's it, it, in my opinion, it helps to be prepared for change. You know, like with with eBay, using eBay as an example. You know, we we knew that the change to good deal cancel was coming down the pipe. It was a lot easier to adjust because we knew it was coming. We had time to prepare. Um, Obviously, that doesn't always happen. You know, we don't always have that that warning in some situations. So I think you know, I think being prepared, you know, and having that advanced warning sometimes helps you uh, helps you deal with any kind of change. You know, absolutely. I definitely think that it's good to to um, be actively preparing for change, even in times where it doesn't seem like uh, there's a change on the horizon. Um, keep looking at new avenues for sourcing for you know selling all those different things because you never know when something's going to either dry up or change and completely throw your business through a loop um, like right now I'm currently even looking into Amazon currently trying to you know just dabble with it um, not that I think anything's gonna happen with eBay but I just think it'd be good uh, you know to to even subtly start to change a little bit what I'm doing in my business, um, just so I'm prepared for the future. Right. So what do you, what do you feel like when um, you think you have to change, like you're talking about going to Amazon, mm -hmm. changing your, your business model? Are you scared? Are you willing to accept the change or, you're just going to take it full, full, full force and just go with it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, I wouldn't say I'm scared. I mean, there, there's a little bit, um, of that as far as, well, right now my entire business is tied to eBay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I do do some local stuff, but not enough to support us. 
uh, should eBay completely go away. So that's why uh, I decided, you know, before that even becomes an issue, I'm going to learn Amazon. And luckily, I'm blessed with a lot of friends in this community that know Amazon very well that can kind of help me get my feet wet. I'm not looking to do any kind of volume in Amazon right now. I'm just trying to sign up for a uh, free seller account, which actually I've been having a heck of a time with. It keeps trying to default me to the uh, paid $39.99 or whatever it is a month. I think it might be Craig hacking the system or something. But (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, so I figure I'll just start getting my feet wet in it, you know, selling a little bit FBA here and there. well, not to mention the fact that my uh, my basement down here is getting kind of full. So I'm thinking I could probably send out some of the stuff I have down here, FBA, just to open up some shelf space. You want to still try FBM also? or you just Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely do FBM as well. Craig, what do you get? Clear out space, like stuff that just is not moving on eBay that might have a higher ranking Amazon. I might just, you know, box up a couple boxes and send it in just to, you know, Give me a little bit more space. Cool. Yeah, I would. Uh, my opinion on Amazon for anybody trying to start, like you, Anthony, is start with books. Yeah, I have a ton of books too. So that would I, I, that that's. I hate to say that's the safe route. Mm-hmm. That's not about being safe, but Amazon. Amazon's a lot pickier than eBay is. You know, you get you can get a suspension on eBay, and it's going to be a couple of days. Amazon, they don't play. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think it's critical to learning those rules. And you know, there's there's a lot of videos that. They've got Amazon Seller University videos that are out there that help you with things. Um, one of the biggest things to consider with Amazon is if it's don't sell anything new if it's not new. You know, if you're buying it at a thrift store, don't sell it as new. Right. They can come yeah. back and say, I need proof. I need I need a receipt for that. And you showing them one from a from a thrift store is not going to get it. You know? Yeah. Um, but it's the, the the key thing with Amazon is just learn the rules, learning the platform, learn how, how everything works over there. But It'll, it'll be a change, but you can handle it. If you can handle eBay, you can handle it. Amazon. You just, just got to learn different rules sometimes, you know? Just want to welcome uh, Kelly E. Commerce, Mom, Just Me, Kathy, uh, Boondock Buy Sales, what's up, Cliff? Uh, what else came in here that we haven't seen? Fishing and Picking. Uh, thank you all for coming in today, guys. Yeah. Um, Especially with with that with the FBM, why this is the this is what cracks me up is um every time I always hear people with Amazon, it's everybody goes to books first. I know it's easy to go with because you, you I guess you don't get gated in a lot of stuff and in, in, in books right. it's a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Um, why I know it's everybody's having trouble with DVDs, CDs, and VHS tapes. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, because it's it, it was it's it's for the the record labels. Is that what they? Why I, is I, I, I don't know. I doubt they're driving it. I think Amazon is just protecting their brand. They don't want people selling knockoffs. Okay. Um, just just to give you an idea, I opened my eBay my Amazon account in two thousand nine, mm-hmm. and I'm still gated on CDs and DVDs. <laughs> But yeah, DC sells says, yeah, no DVDs on Amazon anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, think, I, guess, I think DVDs, unless they're very limited edition pieces or uh, what do they call it? Were they indie indie type movies where yeah. uh, that's that's the best things that are selling now? Because a basic regular CD uh, DVD is just a dollar, two dollars. That's why you get them so much at a, at a yard sales. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I mean, the main reason I suggest starting with books is that's the base of Amazon. That's where Amazon started. Mm-hmm. You know, typically you can get into books cheap. Your entry, your buried entry is very cheap, you know. Um, and it's important to learn, you know, and truthfully, I, I would almost start out doing Fulfilled by Merchant first because that's going to be the closest to being like eBay. Mm-hmm. You're going to get an order, you ship an order, you know. Um eBay, I mean Amazon. You're you're supposed to use, and I think they require you use a um, a, a new box. You can't use a used box. Um, I didn't know that. The reused boxes. I don't yeah. think you can. Um, yeah, I don't think you can on that. I think I remember um, before and uh, Nevermore Antiques before he got uh, suspended, but he was he said was sending in used boxes too, and they were sending them right back to him. So. 
Now, now if you're shipping, if you're shipping an FBA shipment in, it won't matter. But if you're shipping right. an order to a customer, yeah, that be an order. Yeah, gotcha. And it can't be, you know, you can't use your your eBay boxes to ship an Amazon order. Yeah. You now, I've shipped in, I've shipped in FBA orders into the Amazon warehouse in an eBay box. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. Yeah, they don't have a problem with that. They're going to unbox it and put it on the shelves for you. Yeah, you know. you're sending it right actually to to the to the merchant itself, so they don't want to. They want it clean, nice, nice. Like it's coming right from them. So yeah. Uh, good morning, D. Good morning, Sherry McD. How are y'all? Glad y'all could stop by. But uh, don't don't be afraid of it. Um, it's it's not the monster that everybody says it. You know, some people portray it as a monster. Um, you just got you just got to learn. It, if you're gonna sell on any platform, you need to know the rules. You know. I mean, I know they, I, they ask you for. A, I know they ask you for a ton of information when you when you're when you're when you're applying to become a, a seller. Right. Might as well just give them your first born, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I, and it makes sense, you know. They they don't want just any Yahoo selling, you know. Right. It is it's different, you know. On on Amazon, the the customer is Amazon's customer. They're not really your customer. You know, right. Like eBay. You know, eBay is a. a a platform for your store amazon you're a seller in amazon store in my opinion you know understandable but one of the things i like better about ebay there's just yeah. so much i actually like better about ebay from you know like a entrepreneurial uh, aspect yeah. you you it's your store you, mm -hmm. your, you your face on the product not you yep. selling to a conglomerate saying that okay it's not me it's you know it's i'm just i'm just another i'm a third third person going into into it i've heard so many people basically um equate themselves to like being a foot soldier to amazon mm -hmm. and it's like i don't really want to be a foot soldier to anyone mm -hmm. that's one of the issues i have with it right and and the reason prices are a little bit higher on amazon is because amazon's fee structure is a little bit different Mm -hmm. Nothing, you know, but but you know, you also have got the guaranteed two day delivery, you know, because a lot of people are members of Prime, um, things like that. And if you decide to go fulfilled by merchant, be careful with the uh, fulfilled by merchant Prime, mm -hmm. which is where you actually have to have if you sell something that is ordered fulfilled by merchant Prime, that means you have to have it to the customer, doesn't matter where they are in two days. Yeah, so, so that could kill you. Now you can, I, I don't do any of that, um, but you can go in and say, I only want to do it regional based. So you'd only have to, you'd only be able to take orders for your items that are in that, in that program within your region. So you're not having to worry about sending something to California. Gotcha. Yeah. And again, I, I, I do, I don't do as much on Amazon as I used to. Uh, I was, my big thing was books. I've chased a couple of things like the Monopoly game at Christmas and all that, but yeah, you know, I've got a fair, I've got a fair understanding of Amazon just because I've been on it for ten years. Yeah, I really um, yesterday before I took a little nap before the uh, auction, but I was still going through that whole aspect with uh, Macari and trying to get that set up because I think that's gonna help me grow a little bit more too. So uh, I just I I I get a little nervous because of trying to make it accessible for me to use easily. You know, and I know that um, eBay is working on that. And Facebook Marketplace is simple. It's two pitches and uh, up to 10 pitches and you just throw it on. But I, um, uh, the unmentionable, I, there's no way I can, I can it's just too crazy. <laughs> yeah. too crazy for me on that one. Good morning, FGS. Glad you stopped by. Uh, I don't know if you said something to Cliff. I don't know if he was in here earlier or not. But Cliff was, uh, hey, uh, the, the, the wonderful name in uh, the English, uh, YouTube channel, the bum crack picker. I'm not into picking bum cracks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad you could make it, BCP. I, I think uh, BCP and uh, and Pat D's are jockeying for that top uh, top uh, visibility on YouTube. Yep. Yep. What's going on, Nate? Welcome in, Michelle Latham. Glad y'all can make it. What's up, Nate? Yep. Hopefully, get in touch with uh, me and uh, Anthony. We can try to get uh, situated so you can see uh, 
what we what we have planned so for the for the trip and, so, uh, so, so yeah. talking so talking change i know one of the biggest changes we've all seen because we're all i would have guessed probably 85 90 percent of us sell on ebay the whole uh the whole go to a cancel change you know that that had a pretty big impact on a lot of people that that yeah that hit a ton of people too and that's why i think a lot of people got scared and they didn't know what to do and that's why i was saying when uh everybody says oh change is good change is good yes it is good but i know and if they say people that people say that they're not afraid of change then there's something definitely wrong because change is a good thing but mm -hmm. You have to you have to know how to handle it too. Yeah, I don't I don't mind change. I don't like when change occurs just for the sake of changing, though. Right. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And and sometimes you see that. Mm -hmm. I mean, not in big big situations like eBay, Amazon, stuff like that. But you know, with the good till canceled, a lot of people and I and I was part of the this movement ran. You know, didn't do the thirty day or the good till canceled before we were forced to. You know, a lot of times I'd run five and seven day listings because you got that bump on the beginning and you got that bump at the end on going, going, gone, going, going, gone, whatever it was, you know? Right. Yeah. So it, it made sense to, to go five and seven, five or seven days and relist and, and all that, you know, now, you know, that, that has a huge impact, you know, but, uh, I know, I know I've heard people talking about how they, you know, come up with workarounds, you know, trying to get back to that same situation, you know, by just ending listings every five days ending listings every seven days and restarting them, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but I think that's the key to when you see this kind of change is being able to adapt to that change. Right. I mean, not, not necessarily change your business model, but find ways you can get back to where you were, you know? Yeah. I see that there's a couple of people that have said that they've always done the good till canceled. And I'm one of those two, like I, that, that was always my business model. I wanted to just have the listings out there. I didn't want to have to worry about, you know, ending relisting all that stuff i just had them out there and then i would just worry about getting new stuff put on so that was kind of always my model right and, I, and i'm sure that there's there's you know, there was always positives to both sides you know and then, again like we, we talk about every day it, it just because one person does it i mean it's right or wrong right, right. You know, right. For sure. it's, it's what you decide on and it's it, it works for you and it's good you know mm -hmm. and, you know there is an advantage to good to cancel because you're getting picked up in google yeah you know, right. doesn't sell because yeah. typically you're not going to get picked up in Google for 30 days. Right. I mean, it is what it is. You know, everybody, everybody's different. You know, I, I can see my opinion on the get to a canceled is it's trying to, it's one more step of M, uh, eBay trying to get closer to Amazon. You know, if everything is out there long term, then it gives them an easier way to build a catalog per se, you know? Right. Yeah. And right. things like that. I just need to answer a question that Sherry McDee said. Uh, Sherry, uh, later on this afternoon, um, it's going to probably be a, a comment, not picking a car this time. Um, I just have to count how many cars I have available this time, but um, it'll be a uh, first. So many comments that come into the uh, into the video, then that's when we'll you'll be able to pick. So it's it's a little different to this week again. So. Good morning, Tommy. Glad you could make it this morning. And uh, Justin Jacobs jumped in. Yeah. And we, we, we appreciate people that show up. I know we've had a great group that's shown up every morning, you know, Monday, right. Friday, and we definitely appreciate it. We say it every morning, but I think, you know, if we didn't say it, I, I wouldn't feel right. We definitely appreciate y'all coming in every morning. Fat Girl Selling says, question, if eBay only has good till cancel, eventually are you going to even have a bump by re re by relisting? I, I don't know. I, I I wonder if, and I know uh, Nate mentioned, good till cancel is eBay's uh, Hail Mary to hope, buyer, uh, to hope buyers that search. With Google, we'll see their ads as well. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think, um, I wonder if it's more of... Uh, that in addition to maybe leveling the playing field across the board, you know, mm -hmm. with sellers possibly, you know, right. I could see possibly that having an impact or, you know, that thought process, maybe, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The, the, the U, U, USPS changes, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna mention that. We see we see those what every every quarter to six months, half a year, yep. take. Yeah, dimensional shipping now being the bit one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. the, that's important to stay on top of because that can really screw you up with shipping. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because especially when they keep on wanting to change prices, change prices, change prices all the time. You know, you got to stay, you got to stay on top of it. If not, then you're done. I mean, I mean the last two we've seen the dimensional shipping, right? Mm -hmm. But we also saw the change on um, first class where it wasn't just a flat rate based on a a weight, you know, right. it was, it's based on what region, you know, what, what region it's going to now. Right. So that's two, that's two pretty big changes in the last six to eight months we've had. Mm -hmm. They could have a pretty huge impact, you know? But what other kind of change? Anybody, uh, anybody in the chat? I'm looking. I've, I've seen a couple people like Tommy said that uh, if it goes past 60 days, he ends and sells similar. It works for him. And then uh, Paul says that after 90 days, he deletes the listing completely and makes a new listing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, that that's making an adjustment to your, your business based mm -hmm. on, you know, change in the platform. Right. Um, but when he has, he has a question for, I know, that everybody with the with the changes and everything, how long are you going to keep something online? I know you said two years. You finally started selling stuff. I don't, okay. I don't know. If, I don't know if I have you know if, if it's not costing me anything. Yeah. You know? the, the the minute I, the minute I de, I delete or remove it, it probably would have sold the next second. You know. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. I mean, if it's not costing me anything, well, what do you have to lose by it sitting there? Mm-hmm. Now, if, now, if it's a big item, I've got a treadmill sitting right here in the bedroom. I've tried to sell on eBay. Right. That's one thing. Yeah. yeah. I, I think another part of that issue, though, is if you do have, like, for example, uh, premium store owners, um, if you have 1,000 plus items in your store and then you're getting hit with that overage every month of whatever it is, 25 cents or whatever per item. Mm -hmm. Um, that might be a time like right now I'm, I'm actually considering downsizing my store. I'm around 1300 give or take items right now. And I'm considering downsizing my store and taking some stuff to the flea market, like stuff that just has been sitting here for close to a year um, I get to kind of blow out and clear out my store for a little bit of the uh, stuff that it doesn't really need. Uh, I'm also thinking about going through and uh, lotting a lot of stuff now that I've been selling individually, like a lot of the lower price items uh, rather than just nickel and diamond, um, which it, it, it adds up. So I, I don't, I don't hate on those small orders I get, but mm -hmm. I definitely think I'm going to go through and start lotting a lot of things just to clear space down here. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and take a lot of stuff out to the flea market just to kind of recoup my buy-in. Right. Would you, would you ever think of put, uh, making another small store? Yeah, Maybe I'm, I'm actually, I've been planning on doing another small store just for like trading cards and stuff like that mm -hmm. because it's killing my um, uh, top rated seller status. Right. Right. That's yeah. where I've been seeing a lot of that where people are like, wait a minute, yeah. What's going on? Why can't? Why am I losing this one? Because you have so much smaller stuff that could easily go somewhere into another small store if you wanted to, or, or you know. And, and if you're if you're starting that other smaller store, you're going to build up feedback and all that mm -hmm. pretty quickly if you're selling you know smaller items like that because hopefully you'll be selling more you know. Sure. Right, right. And that, and that's a good point. Talking about lotting things up, you know, it's going to help you on your 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 number of listings. It's going to help you potentially get rid of items, you know, clear up some space. Mm -hmm. It's a good point. Good. Great. So if I'm just, for example, like Nate said, go ahead and run a sale on things that you've had the longest. Is there a way to target items, not by category, but by length of time listed? Uh, was nervous. As long as you don't change, you know, if you take the, thing of you know doing a self similar or deleting a listing you know redoing it you're gonna lose that but uh mm -hmm. and that's that's my problem I, I've, I've re redone mine a handful of times mm -hmm. not like i'm deleting but I'll, I'll end listings and restart them so i'll lose that issue of how long something's been out there um, gotcha. yeah. but it does show you in that column um the begin date now 
shows you how long it's been up there. So many days, so many months, okay. all that. So you can sort by that? Um, I think so. I'm opening up. I didn't have open uh, eBay open. Oh, eBay open. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of which, that's going on right now. Yeah. That was close. I would consider it. I just can't see dropping the kind of money people are dropping just to go network with people. And you know, there, there's good content out there, but so much of it's going to be available via people's videos anyway. Right. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm not saying it's bad that people win. It's just. And, you know. and, and they cut it down even more this year. It was a day less, and then it started even later in, the day, in that first day. Yeah. So. Uh, yes. Yeah, you can sort by start date. Yeah. I, I'm in there right now, just checking it out. And then if you do a, uh, I think if you turn on a promotion, and before I speak, I'm going to go there and see. I think you can. And, when you uh, items. Paul says he puts a date with when he first lists an item in a custom SKU. So he just keeps up the tra keeps the track of the listing. So it makes yeah, it a little when, easier that way. When you create a promotion, one yeah. of the filtering items is days on site. So you can say if something's been out there from 60 to 90 days, mm -hmm. I want to apply 80% mm -hmm. off. That's or whatever true. the number would be, you know, if it's been out there 30 to 60, I want to apply 15% off yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you can definitely attack things at different levels for sure. I'm going to go start a promotion right now. Basically everything that's been on here, 200 plus days is getting put on sale right now. And a lot of the yeah. stuff that's going, going on sale stuff that I just need to end up lotting. Right. Yeah. And, and I think the maximum promotion you can put on is either 75 or 80%. Okay. There is a limit, and I and I have done that before. Just I've, I've had stuff out there. It's been out there so long. I'm like, I don't care. Somebody just buy it. If it, mm -hmm. does, if it makes it through this 75 or 80 percent discount yeah. after 30 days, it's done. Right. You know, you want to welcome a couple of people that just came in too, guys. Yeah, no Tanami Tanami 18 just came in. Uh, Marrakesh seven. Uh, well, let's be the difference, Miss Joy. Thank you for coming in. Um, so. A lot of people have just come in, so we want to thank everybody. Like I said, we want to keep track of, oh, BK Vending has just come in. Hey, what's mm -hmm. going on? Remember, like we said, we want to keep everybody involved. And Miss uh, Tracy, uniquely me, just came in. Miss Tracy, so, that's the uh, the IKEA bag. Yeah. <laughs> Tracy's awesome. She, she, she was on somebody's live. Yeah, it was she was on D's live yesterday. Yep. And, and, they, and somebody asked in the chat, what are the blue bags back behind her? And I said, you must not watch your videos. You need to go watch your video on using those for storage, which is a great idea. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's a great video. And Tracy's like, no, I'm like, no, it's a very good, idea. a great video. Right. You know, it's another. And Tracy, I, I don't think you have a lot of subscribers. And I'm not saying it's bad, but again, you can't judge a book by its cover. Tracy's got a great video mm -hmm. on a great topic. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to go check it out. Okay, and, and Tracy is very, very, I've, I've learned with talking with Tracy personally and watching a lot of her videos. She is very motivational also. Yeah. She has a, she had did one motivational video that she did that she was literally walking walking to a store and just walking around and you learn so much from just with her aspect on how she sees life just by just that one video and I appreciate that. She's really a person that really can help a lot of people out too. So uh Mariah uh Mariah P, uh, uniquely me. She's right above you in the chat. Uh, her name is Tracy. Um, she has a video. It's a couple of months old. Um, mm -hmm. it, she uses the uh, blue Ikea zip up bags for storage of her, um, her clothing items primarily. I know she's got other stuff there, but After, yeah, it, it was pretty cool. I really liked it. I had never thought about that. And that's kind of thinking outside the box sometimes, you know, it looks neat, oh. uniform. Not that all storage needs to be pretty, but you know, yeah. If you're doing it in the house, you want it to be as acceptable as possible, in my opinion. Melissa Cape just came in. She just asked me how the weather was last night. Yeah, we had about two and a half inches of rain. It's still raining now. She's not that far. We might um try to see if we can hook up with her when we all go to Plymouth. But she's not that far away from there, uh, Anthony, when we go. So Cool. So Sounds good to me. Yeah. As many people, as many uh, viewers and subscribers we can meet up with, I think that would be awesome. Um, and it's what thirty nine ninety nine. Yep, thirty nine ninety nine to come and visit us. Nice. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and you get a free bottle of water that's straight out of the tap. <laughs> yep. 
But uh, change, change, change. Trying to think of what else. Yeah. Well, just change in life in general. I mean, things happening and life happening. I mean, that's that's a lot of things. See, we talk a lot about um, reselling and things happening with that. But with I know just myself with the, with the past four years, change in life and how to do different different things. What what would you say? I know Anthony with you with all of a sudden you're you're wrestling, you're doing this, you're doing that, and then boom, yeah. it goes your back. Yep. Now you have to take life and see what can I do now. Well, changed everything. Right. Yeah. And and sometimes you sometimes you expect things. Sometimes you don't. Right. You know, right. You know like I said earlier, being prepared helps. But yeah, you know, I'm sure the two situations both y'all are in, you didn't expect. You know, it's no. like okay. Yeah. For sure. Where do I go? What do I do? Right. And I think. So. I think that's the difference. So. I don't know about y'all. Um, and I don't know if y'all talked about it much, but I know I went from selling part time to selling full time and making that adjustment. So many people, and I'm right, it may not be the way everybody does it part time, but part time, a lot of times you're not dependent on that money. Right. You're working hard, but you know, there's a difference in doing this part time and full time, you know. And I, I had a hard time adjusting when I was doing it part time, yeah. I was doing my best just to pick up home runs or you know, yeah, higher dollar items. Mm -hmm. And 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 that, and when you do it full time, it's you're not going to find those home runs yeah. all. Yeah. You've got to have those bread and butter. You got to have those store fillers. You got to have the, you know, within yeah. reason. I'm not saying have a, a million little 50 cent items, you know, but right. that, that's, that's a change that, that, you know, some people are prepared for Some weren't, some aren't, you know, it, yeah. absolutely. That change definitely. So, but, uh, just yeah. get it, it's it, it was hard because when i was doing it part time it was primarily i'm looking when i'm walking through the stores or walking yard sales i'm thinking okay. what what can i sell on ebay what can i sell on amazon yeah mm -hmm. i had those blinders on right which in that situation wasn't so bad i was making good money i was picking up still selling a decent volume mm -hmm. i want to do it full time then you start thinking okay i've got to get outside of what can i just ship what's easy to yep. ship i got to get the mindset of what can i make money on right like that, you know, at, when I went full time, I started picking up the exercise equipment. Mm -hmm. Would I have done that when I was part time? Probably not. Yeah. You know, absolutely. See, furniture, I, don't know, I think I've heard you talk about furniture before, Anthony. You know, stuff like that. That's, that's tough. But um, yeah, like like I said, when I was when I was working full time, when I was working in the in the restaurant, I only had one day, so I would have to do my resourcing my sourcing in the morning, and. Um, just find stuff that I wanted. And then on my days off, I was either doing the flea market or picking up a house to clean out. So I was looking at all that stuff basically. So I was like, okay, this guy can throw on eBay. This I can sell at the flea market. I had everything broken down to what I needed to. When everything happened now, it's a struggle for me to do a house clean out. I have to have friends help me. So now I'm forking out money to also do the house clean outs. And what can I sell and what can I, and furniture, is a, a dead duck right now around here. It's just it's so much of it that it's not even worth it. So that's why the Hot Wheels, yes, I've always been with Hot Wheels and old toys and everything, but that's something where I can pick up. It's small, uh -huh. and the profits are pretty good on them. So I know where I can, if I buy some old G.I. Joes, boom, like five, ten bucks a piece, out the door they go. You know? Right. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of the same way right now because I can't really lift the furniture with like my back and my hips and everything being messed up. So um, honestly, I I'm still of the mindset of I target small things. I will go after like electronics and stuff like that. But um, stuff that's little, I mean, even if it's like smaller profits, like I'll buy a bunch of toys a lot together. Mm -hmm. Like I bought a whole big bag of toys. Like a lot of them were like little junky toys, but I'll get thirty dollars by putting them together. Right. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll give somebody a dollar or two for that. Yeah. Right. Tr Tracy's got a very good point. Shipping uh, shipping charges uh, are making me think twice about some things I used to source. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Yeah, Especially dimensionally now, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's a whole nother wrench because you really need to think like, well, is even if it's like uh, under a certain weightage, if it's like 
so big, like length and width wise, it's mm-hmm. it's really going to change the game. Right. Yeah, th- th- these last two USPS changes have been very significant, in my opinion. You know, I agree. You used to be able to pick up something, and you weren't afraid to make, you know, sell something for six, seven, eight dollars free ship because you know you can typically sell ship it for less than three dollars. You know, mm-hmm. right? Not that I'm into do it, selling things like that, but you know, it, 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 sometimes it comes no question. But I don't know. It's, it's crazy. I, I think I mentioned it the other day. I think that's the USPS trying to get to the point of ultimately eliminating the the first class package. Okay. I think I think ultimately it's going to be just first class letters. Mm-hmm. a little further down the road you won't even have that anymore because so much of that stuff is going to be you know you, how many people are getting a check in the mail how many people are sending up a, a job a, a resume in the mail I'm just using those as examples you know so right. much of that stuff is all online now and, and electronic digital whatever you want to call that's it that's right I'm, I'm trying to wondering if media mail is going to probably go away too possibly we'll see I, I really I think I think they're going to get to the point where it's, you know, 90 plus percent priority, mm-hmm. you know, they're, and I, I don't know if they, you know, they've always had the, 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 that that's kind of them in their leg up on the U S um, on, uh, on FedEx and, you know, mm-hmm. the UPS and all that, because they offer that smaller, cheaper, yeah. right. But, but they're really approaching that, that price point of the, the low end UPS FedEx, all that at some point, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's crazy. Any big, uh, any big plans today? Anything different than yesterday? Just the Bible study. I mean, that's really the only thing I have planned. Uh, other than that, I'm going to be doing some listing. Ash is going out with a friend this afternoon, so I'm going to be down here just trying to throw as much on eBay as I can. Is there a first day to get out? Um, she's been out, um, yard sailing with me. And then, uh, we went to a carnival the other day, That's and cool. and the drive-in. So she's been out a little bit, but this will be the first time. Like she's going out by herself. Mm-hmm. What'd y'all go see at the drive-in? The Lion King. I That's right. mentioned that. It was pretty cool. I got bit up a little bit by mosquitoes, but other than that, it was, <laughs> you know, it was fun. We took, uh, my nephews and my mom went with us too. That's cool. You're just so sweet. Those mosquitoes couldn't. Uh, I know. Please. <laughs> oh man, we've got a. I think we've got two two drive-ins. Neither one of them real close. Yeah, they just opened a new one like 20 minutes from my house, so we figured we'd run out there. They only got one screen, so they'll show like two movies a night, one right after the other. Right. So we only. Is, is it by? Is it by? By how many people are in the car, or is it there's a car? Yeah, load? I was like really weirded out by that because I've never been to a drive-in where it's not just like by the vehicle. So I remember growing up, we used to just pile everybody into whoever owned a minivan's van and then just go. And it was like three dollars. Like they're oh, looking in the the vehicle, trying to count how many people are there, like how many kids, what ages they are. It's like, are you serious? Like this is the drive-in. If I don't yeah. know this, we would have comfortably taken two vehicles. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the last time I went to the drive-in. I know we've got a couple that are right here close, but I don't. I really can't remember the last time I went to one. I know yeah. back. In the, I know back in the '70s, I saw Bambi on the big screen like that. Cool. I saw Grease on 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 uh, the big screen. Well, the funniest part is we talked about this in before, where I used to work at McDonald's when I was younger, and um, literally the it was up on a hill. And it looked down, and it had we had a, the called the Seacom Twins, and literally you could see one of the movie theaters. So every Friday and Saturday night, whoever whoever wasn't feeling well, whoever didn't want to be uh, want to work much, if they want to work drive through because they could sit there and put the toys in the in the Happy Meal boxes and sit there and watch a movie the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, the chat was the chat was talking about the shipping. Uh, BK Vending and Flipping says I shipped golf clubs out yesterday. USPS won fifty dollars. FedEx was nineteen, and that brings up a good yeah. point. With all these USPS changes, you know, we got. We, I think we all got comfortable with the USPS as our primary, right. you know, because it was typically yeah. the, the cheapest. But now it's getting to the point where, you know, looking at other options like uh, like pirate ship, yeah, you know, looking at 
FedEx, looking at UPS, you know, UPS is a little bit harder. I don't use UPS hardly at all, unless right. I'm putting something into Amazon, but you really yeah, need to do that. Very rarely we use UPS. Um, I just find FedEx is cheaper. Like in anything that's like 10 plus pounds, I'm, I'm going to shoot the FedEx. Right. And, and, and eBay's, you know, with FedEx, it's made it easier. We can compare. You just click the yep. little, you know, FedEx button and, and look at all yep. the prices on FedEx. Um, and you'd be amazed sometimes at, you know, how much money you can save, like he's talking about, you know. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, oh, they are. I, I don't know if that's a male or female, but. Right. Diane Matthews came in, say, say hi. Donatella just came in. Hey, Donatella. Um, yeah. There's not, there's not a no at the end of that? Not Donatello. No, it's Donatella. And Kelly said that she she went to go and see the Lion King cartoon on her first date, and they go on this plan on there for their anniversary to see the first on their anniversary the new Lion King. And Donatello, Donatella, it's right there. Anthony hasn't hasn't been seen. It's just because no one's bought that for me yet. <laughs> yeah, but the the newer the newer stuff I've seen starting to starting to slip, but the older stuff is still up there in pricing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kathy. Yep, I saw Benji as well on the uh, the big screen. Yeah, I think I I think there were multiple releases of Benji. I think there was like a one, two, and three. Benji go home or something like that. Yeah. Yep, that was way back. I remember seeing Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, on the big on the big screen that was cool wow hey gary westman thank you for coming in just another day in the neighborhood yeah that's true um, i remember when et came out i must have seen it seven times in three days because everybody oh i wanted to take you to go and see it oh i'll go watch it again <laughs> <laughs> But back in those days, it was like a dollar seventy-five, two dollars per person to go see it. Right, exactly. I mean, three dollars. Yeah. I mean, I remember for my birthday in eighty, nineteen eighty, I took the whole class. I mean, the whole class, and we had twenty-two kids in my class. We all went to go and see uh, *Empire Strikes Back*. And we all sat in the front with our heads up, watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Horror, Horror Picture Show. I bet that was good on the big screen. Drive in. Yeah, we were talking about that last night at the at the auction because uh, somebody said, uh, "What was it? Um, it slices, it dices." It, and I I couldn't finish the rest of it because of the the rest of the Rocky Horror Picture Show version is not politi not politically correct, but just can't state half of the things that you can say. If, uh, has anybody taken the time to go and see that in the movie theaters? With the actual tooth, with the with the toast, and with the squirt guns, and I haven't. No, oh, we've, got, we've got a pretty cool. Uh, it's a really old theater, probably from the '30s or '40s, down in downtown Birmingham. It's the Alabama Theater, yeah. and uh, every Christmas around, you know, approaching Christmas season, they uh, they show like uh, the Christmas Vacation in there. You know, a lot of the the good, not that's a great Christmas movie, but it, you know movies like that and they'll uh they have a, a, a organ that comes out of the stage and the guy plays it's just a great historic little That's cool. theater. it's always a big crowd they're very interactive it's it's just great nostalgia i saw grizzly what movie is that grizzly grizzly adams that's what i'm thinking she said dc sells says i saw grizzly at the drive-in the one that scared me grizzly Real Kentucky. Yeah. I don't know. I've, I've, been know I've been to Kentucky before. Pretty cool. I got the uh, life-size Noah's Ark out there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Like, literally, like, they have it set up, like, to the exact way the Ark was. It was super cool. Yeah. Yep. It's not It's not scaled. It's it's to all the measurements. All the yeah. cubics sure. back then. It's awesome. Uh, DC South, she goes, says, I managed a theater. We played Rocky Howard. They destroyed the auditorium. Took two hours to clean. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> Gary's asking if any of us sell on it. Amazon, if so, what's your opinion on being a new seller? I'm in the process of becoming a new seller, so um, I can tell you my opinion is kind of 
I don't know if I'm skeptical right now, but I, I'm just trying to see how it works for my business as opposed to eBay. You know what I mean? Cause I'm just so used to eBay. I've never actually sold on Amazon yet. So I'm in the process of trying to sign up for one of the free accounts. I don't think I've had my Amazon accounts since 2009. So I'm not real sure, but I can, I'd almost be willing to bet that st- buying from a new seller on Amazon is not such a big deal as just buying from a new seller on eBay. Potentially, you know, eBay, you know, you've got feedback on Amazon, but you know, I've, I've sold since 2009. I don't sell in huge volume. I've got 29 feedback on Amazon. You just don't get feedback at the rate that on Amazon that you do on eBay, you know? And I, you know, I just wonder if that's why it's, you know, and, and a lot of stuff that's on Amazon is, is typically new in my opinion. Um, but as far as from the seller's perspective, we we're talking about that earlier. Um, if you're just getting started, I would suggest starting with books, getting used to how the system works, learning the rules. Um, I, I would almost even suggest starting out for Phil by Merchant. Be careful though with the uh, Phil by Merchant Prime because you could get uh, get hit pretty hard on shipping fees because you have to have things delivered in two days. Um, it's not bad. It's, uh, Amazon is not the beast that everybody puts it out to be. It's important to know the rules. But I was saying earlier, you, any platform you sell on, you need to know the rules before you start selling there. Right. You know? Right. Even YouTube, same thing. Yeah. You, no, you're not. You, yeah, you, you're not. We're selling stuff, but we're not selling stuff. But you still gotta. There's so many different rules on YouTube. It's it's crazy now, and they're making more and more. So. And and I think I don't know if Rebecca brought it up. Um, they were talking about returns. Uh, there's potentially a higher rate of return on Amazon sometimes because Amazon in my opinion and a lot of people think this as well i think is that you're you're selling on amazon's platform but the the customers they're buying it are customers of amazon they're not customers of yours right. and, and amazon has, is like walmart they have a pretty loose return policy um so you can get things back three six you know handful of months down the road and amazon's going to take it back without question typically yeah and i remember seeing some of the stuff that scott's gotten back like wait a minute here this was complete. Why is it missing this wire? Well, maybe the person needed that wire out of that piece and sent it back. Yeah. You, but, see, but, it at, you see it at the stores all the time. But the, but those no no questions asked type returns are, are you know probably what you know that that's Amazon trying to be like a Walmart. Not trying. That's the wrong terminology. You know that's they're taking that model. You know because I don't know if everybody's Walmart's that way. But I could take something back. I saw I saw somebody bring back a a boat motor they bought in, in eBay and it was all crusty and nasty looking and they gave their money back at Walmart. You know, That's crazy. Uh, I Walmart see if they, if you don't have the receipt, they give you, um, what do they call it? Um, credit. They give you a, a card so you can, you have to use it in the store. But other than that, and I've, I've had people literally go in and, hand back Hot Wheels from 2001, 2002 that I've seen on the pegs and it's 2018 because they're still the same barcodes. They're, they haven't changed. It's all a one universal barcode. Right. So. True. Yeah, they're, they're talking about FBA versus Merchant Fulfilled. You know, most people that buy on Amazon are going to look for that, um, that prime sticker on an item. Um, now, if they're going to look for a FBA versus an FBM um, prime, I don't know. You know, as long you know, you do kind of, you do have a risk in order ordering an item from a, a merchant that's doing prime. You know, hopefully they're they're as as a as a seller, they won't they they should strive to meet that two day delivery. But you're not you're not guaranteed. You're not even really guaranteed with 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 Amazon. But right, you no, know, it's. They've got a higher. I'd be willing to bet across the board they've got a higher success rate of getting your your item in two days than overall merchants that are doing prime mm-hmm. as as a whole, you know. And that's not a knock on anyone. Anybody that's doing merchant fulfill prime. It's just the nature of the beast, you know. They've got they've got a bigger a bigger infrastructure to handle those orders versus one person or smaller number of people processing orders. That Cliff says. 
the return policy at his local Walmart. It's a joke. They never see it. Because you have all that fake money. It's, it's all different colors, you know? Exactly. <laughs> it's based cartoon money. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you buy it, when you go and buy a, a board game and you try to bring it back, you know what they're trying to, they're not going to give it back to you because you're using all that, real, all that money that was in the game. <laughs> Monopoly money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna do today. I'm still, I still haven't wrapped up my development projects. I'm, I'm, I'm on the tail end of both of them. Really? Okay. I still need to work on that video. I was gonna do that yesterday and end up spending more time on this development stuff. I was talking about with the laptop. Right. Like you said, you wanted to, you wanted to finish up that development anyway because it's money's too good. It's hard to pass up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Using a good bit of yesterday looking for new furniture. We just uh, bought a new living room set. Cool. Delivered tomorrow. So That's exciting. All the other, all the other stuff's going to be on the side of the road. So everybody in Pittsburgh, please go and put, pick up Anthony's. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we're actually going to be posting our couch for free on uh, Facebook later yeah. on. Um, <laughs> it's a uh, sectional and it has uh, two recliners in it. Nice. So. Yeah. Y'all are, are probably going to laugh at this. I've got furniture in my den. That literally was made in the eighties, but yeah, it's it. Look it up. It's made by a company called Cargo. Cargo, okay. Yeah, like cargo shorts. Yeah, it's incredible. It is made. It's it's like it's built to last. It's but it does. It's not. It doesn't have that eighty style. Okay. You know, it. yeah. It's very. It's it's hard. Um, you see, in the eighties, you see a lot in churches, like in youth rooms and stuff like that. Yeah. It was just hard, heavy. We've got a, we've got two full size couches, a love seat, a mirror. I mean, look, I, I have not bought furniture, and I've been married twenty seven years. We got that about two. I probably had it twenty five years, and it's in the same shape it was back then. But it's yes. uh, yeah. you frozen? Oh me. Uh, Anthony is I'm on the screen. screen. My hey. back. You're back. Yeah, this is this is the couch we're giving away. It's a sectional. Nice. Both sides, both ends have a recliner in it. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. I, I don't know if it'd be worth me driving up to Pittsburgh to get though. Probably not. <laughs> and even t on on the, the website, it's even showing. Uh, how you can restore it? You talking about the cargo? Yeah, it's it's good stuff. We uh, we 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 got my mom gave us our first couch uh, a year or two after we got married, and then we found some used in, in on in the paper or the bulletin board is our little printed. I'm sure a lot of cities have it. The little printed newspaper yeah. style classified yeah. ads. And I think for a couch, a love seat. A chair with an ottoman and a mirror. I think we paid five hundred dollars, and that's wow. been isn't that's been twenty five years ago. Yeah. Well, they, they showed on eBay. They showed a kid's bedroom set for six hundred. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's the, that's the only thing we have that's made by that brand. But it, right. it, my kids will be able to use it. It's just durable. Nice. You now they, they may have to redo the the, the cushion covers and right, right stuff like that. But the frames are just solid. I think those are oak. Or something. I don't. I don't remember. We really liked it. <laughs> oh, you got uh, 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 oh, yeah. you, you said, "Hey, Nate, come and pick it up." <laughs> yeah, you can have it if you want it, man. Yeah. Um. I don't have no room. My house is small. Yeah. yeah. Fishing and picking. Yeah, it's it's the old heavy wooden. Commercial looking, yeah. Um, furniture, it's, it's been good to us, you know. Does it look it does it look 2000 stylish? No, but we're, we're not, we're not into all the what it looks like kind of thing, you know. It's I, was waiting, I, was waiting see, I was waiting to see Adam, I was waiting to see if um, you had like the, the plastic on the couches and stuff like that, like my grandmother used to have. <laughs> no. You can't sit in the living room. Why? It's plastic on the couch. 
That's what a couch is made for. Yeah. <laughs> yep. My very first car when I turned 16, I had a, uh, my mom gave me, she was due for a new car and she just gave me her. She had a 1979 Ford Fairmont station wagon, white, okay. big wood grain down the side. Yeah, yep. And it had an orange interior. And when you said this, the, the, the plastic cover on the couch, the interior, my mom had left the plastic on the seats in the front because <laughs> it was cloth interior and she didn't want it to get stained or, yeah. you know, I had two younger brothers. This was, let's see, I turned 16 in 1985. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So it was six. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It was a mess. Yeah. Like when I when I got it, that was the first thing I done when I ripped that dang plastic off. I'm like, I'm getting this out of here. <laughs> so you had the fam you had the family truckster then. It was not a full size. It was a it was the smaller. Oh, yeah, you had the fam Yeah, you didn't have the con the uh the Crown Vic. No. The Crown the Crown Vic station wagon. I did for I did, but it had the three fifty one Windsor in it. And I love that thing. <laughs> yep. Um, Fish and Piggins saying they had that furniture that I was talking about in their dorms at NC State 20 years ago. I used the chair as a jack stand. Oh, yeah. I, I, it, to tell you how strong it is, I've, I've had to work. We've got vaulted ceilings in our den. Mm -hmm. and I've taken the full-size couch and turned it on in and stood on top of it <laughs> and used it. it it's, that, it's that durable. Nice. That's funny. And I, a jack stand. Wow, that's funny. I like that. But it's it's good stuff. And yeah, I think I think to this day you can still order replacement slip covers or whatever it would be called. Yeah, I would have doubted it because they make all that stuff now still. So wood paneling. Yeah, uh Kelly, you gotta make sure that you say that it's faux wood paneling. Faux. Because you had the you had the, the Fords that did that, and then you had the Jeep Wagoneer. Because the Jeep Wagoneer, the Jeep Wagoneer was the bomb. That was yeah. the full size, the woody. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Because you had, the Cher you had the Cherokee that wasn't, that was normal. That was the base model. And then you had the Wagoneer with all the wood paneling and the leather interior. And, and those are still popular. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you see a lot of people that'll jack them up and put big old tires on them and put big old Mickey Thompson's on them. And right. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's, but that's when cars were cars. You can, you know, not make now so much. They're, they're, they might as well be plastic these days. Right. You know? Eclipse is the 351 winds are another great thing to come out of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing good to come out of Canada is what? Molson and Moosehead. And I don't even know if Moosehead came out of Canada. I may be wrong in saying that. I know Molson. Molson Ice. I love Molson Ice. The Wagoneer would be an awesome sourcing vehicle. Yeah, it had a lot of room. It did. It did. Uh, there, there was a, that was the first one that had flip down seats in the back. Yep. I think we were talking about the other day. Uh, the full size, uh, a lot of those full size station wagons back in that time in the mid 80s had the back seat that faced backwards. Yes. And all, all, all the, all that. The, yeah. Yep. The, that was the country's, the country squire was one of them. And then they had the, um, the Ford Crown Victoria station wagon that had with it opened up and it went left and right and you sat facing each other in the back but yep times have changed there's the, you don't have room for that kind of stuff anymore oh no not at all if you buy a smart car you're looking to get two people in the car <laughs> those are tiny yeah, for sure I, i'd be afraid i'd get hit by like a bicycle or something if i drove <laughs> one of those <laughs> <laughs> I'm but just worried about if you if you're driving down the street, say say you live say you live in Minnesota and all of a sudden you're driving down the street and here comes a moose and knock it it was gonna it's gonna knock the car over in two seconds. You're gonna be like sitting there. Yep. Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's crazy. It's like some of the cars they come out with. I mean, they got the what is it, the who's the cube? Who makes the cube? There's one that it's all it looks like is a big box. Is that a Honda or a Nissan? I think it's a Nissan Cube or something I mean, like that. I, I'd have to look. I don't know who makes it. They are kind of cool because they've typically got some odd looking colors, like the bright green and the. Mm -hmm. They are kind of cool. I think the worst the the worst looking car I've seen these days 
Is it the Pontiac Aztec? How did I know you were going to say that? I, I had that in my mind. I'm like, he's going to say the Aztec. It, it looks like a, a minivan that's had its butt end chopped off. The, the, the only the nice part about the Aztec was it had the um, the camper kit where you could put the, the tent off the back of the back of the car. Oh, really? Yeah. That's well, pretty. So, but yeah. Some somebody said something about a Lego car. <laughs> a Lego oh, car. Now he calls it the Lego a Lego car. Yeah. Cliff, right. Cliff, says he, Cliff says he had a neighbor that had a smart car. It never got stuck in the snow. It didn't weigh enough to get stuck. That's that's simply why you get stuck. A, a, a mm -hmm. car is too heavy. Right. right. They are I cool. They have like 170 man. miles per gallon. Sneaker. Exactly. Like an oversized sneaker. It, it was ugly. I, I did not like it. And, I, and there's a lot of, I mean, I, I usually don't have problems with cars, but I saw that one the first time. I'm like, God, that thing is ugly. You know, I, I didn't have problems with like the, the 70s, 60s and 70s miles, what the Gremlin and uh, mm -hmm. the Pacer. The Pacer. Those the pregnant, the pregnant roller skate. The Pacer was pretty ugly. The Pacer was a pregnant roller skate. <laughs> <laughs> is it the Nissan Cube? Okay. I knew, uh, I couldn't remember if it was Nissan it or. Uh, looks uh, like a poster. <laughs> The ruckus, yeah, dude, that's a pretty cool bike. Yeah, my ruckus is that the one that you crashed? Is that the one you got hit with in? On? If you, if, I'll tell you again, if you'd watch your videos, you'd know. Well, I know you got hit, but I just I, I couldn't, they didn't show the bike. So, but oh, I agree, Debbie. It, it was it was just ugly, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. well, that's, why that's why there's no such thing as Pontiac anymore. Yep. A lot of manufacturers have gone by the wayside. Right. Pontiac, Plymouth. You had Pontiac, Plymouth. You had. Oh, who else? Is, who else left? Well, Buick, Buick's really downsized almost nothing. Yeah. I get a couple of cars, and that's pretty much it. Not me calling. My bad, guys. That's. I don't know why it's calling into my computer. On Facebook. I think my wife just got the phone. Yeah. But the Lorians were nice. What are you kidding? He just the gentleman that um Good morning, Tom. What's up, Tom? How are you? Hey Tom, he must have just finished his uh show. Um, uh, was Don was Don in here? I don't know if she was in here earlier. Um Hey, how are you, Don? Yeah. If, if I if you said hey too earlier, I apologize. Yeah, uh, 2006 Scion XB, they call it the coaster. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another one has that little square cube look to it. Yeah, I mean, they're different. You know, everybody's got their own taste. Here I here I am, a, a guy that drove a, a a wood a fake wood grain car with an orange interior, saying something was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then every what was the biggest car that was the most popular car in the 80s? The Dodge Aries K. The Aries. Yep. I remember that one? Yep. That was the Lee Iacocca car of the 80s. We were, uh, I, I think we'd already been, no, we had not been married. I was in college mm -hmm. and had trouble. I drove an 85 Jetta for a while and mm. started having some trouble out of it and was looking for another car. And like I said, back then, it, what, there wasn't a lot, there wasn't internet. So it was yeah. a lot of looking in the newspaper and what we called the bulletin board, that little classifieds yeah. magazine yeah. and i found it you remember the shit was it a chevy sprint there's like yeah. a three cylinder yep yep the little mini one so the, the, the ford festiva was the same was the same comparable yeah. car it, it maybe i don't think it was a four cylinder. i think it was it was like a three speed and yeah. it would take me an hour to get up to 25 miles an hour i'm like i'm i'm not driving this <laughs> it was one of those first ones you know it was along the lines of like the yugo when it came out right they got right. like 170 miles to the gallon. Right. But they never went anywhere. Never could get you out of the way. Yeah. The Ford, the Ford Pit, the Pinto station wagon was amazing. I love the Pinto station wagon. A lot of people race those things, don't they? Yeah. Yep. At the drag strip? Yep. I mean, I know they've been souped up and changed and modified right. and all that. But the Pontiac. See, see, I had to get that change in there. We're talking about change, you know? Yep. The Pontiac Fiero. The one car that you had to worry about because it didn't have a, it had a cardboard firewall and you catch on fire. 
the, the Pontiac Fiero? Fiero. <laughs> Fiero. 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 Yeah. Did they, they call it the Fiero because it burnt burn up so much? Yeah. It was just, I, it, think, I think that's what Todd's got. Doesn't Todd have a Fiero? Yes, he does have a Fiero, but he did. He put one of those um, composite um, firewall firewall in it because it was pla- it was it was it was cardboard. How can you put cardboard between uh, the seats and uh and an engine? <laughs> So yeah, the, our couch is officially gone now. I just put yeah. it on Facebook. Yeah, right, dude. <laughs> it was like, like, my wife just came down. She was like, uh, "Yeah, the couch is gone now." <laughs> that's quick, isn't it? I guess her stepsister's coming over to pick it up. Nice. Yeah. Put put yeah, if you want to something. Post on Facebook is free. Yep. So that's what mm-hmm. I did. You're getting it with stuff just like I'm talking about sourcing that way. People will come get stuff in a heartbeat. Yep. To Dawn saying you shouldn't drive a, the Yugo over the Mackinac Bridge during heavy winds it'll probably blow over. <laughs> <laughs> the Vegas are used for for uh, dragon too, drag racing. Those, those cars are still uh, out there busting chops and flying. The Chevette, I remember the Chevette. Yep. God. Wow. That's all. That's all. Cars too was about the Chevette. And all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, the Pinto had the gas tank mishap because where they put the gas tank. <laughs> God, that's what the Ford F one fifty when it first came out was the same problem. They put instead of putting it on the inside of the um, the the frame, they put it on the outside of the frame. So if it got hit right near the gas tank, it was going to blow up. I didn't know that. The Ford LTD, I had it. My one of my grandparents drove those. They drove those legit all the time. They loved them. Yep. But that, that was, but that was back in the the seventies when cars were built. So yeah. to understand that you know, you didn't see a bunch of ragged cars running around because they could bump into each other and still. Yeah. And one topic you won't see here on my stream: cars. <laughs> <Indeed>. <laughs> So uh, I know Anthony made some notes on uh, some ideas that people had for upcoming shows, and we're going to yep. get those in. Um, I, know anyway, I hope you guys want to pop in there. Uh, yep. Definitely pop them in the chat. And I have a whole list sitting here. Uh, mm-hmm. Thursday's show on my channel is going to be um, one of those notes, uh, which was optimizing eBay listing titles. That'd so be another we're talking about that, and we could probably even bundle in like YouTube titles too, right? Uh, that's, optimization, yeah. because a lot of that is going to be similar. Exactly. Right. So that'll be Thursday's show. I'm not entirely sure what Tommy has planned for tomorrow, but yeah, any other ideas you guys have, we we do take them into consideration. The last three that I've done, uh, counting tomorrow, is all uh, chat inspired topics. Mm-hmm. Good deal. That's it. So, DT Sales, thanks for uh, thanks for jumping in and joining us. All right. Yep. Hope you have a good day. And Debbie, He's Debbie awesome. has a show at nine six p.m. Eastern uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, she goes usually half an hour, forty five minutes about selling. So uh, don't forget to check that out. Um, I will have something up about racing tonight, uh, today. So uh, without ten minutes, about five minutes left, guys. Uh, Anthony, any last words or anything you would want to say? Uh, the only thing really for me is uh, if you're into it, check out my Bible study today at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're reading John chapter 10, and uh, we also have uh, like a little bit of a prayer meeting mixed in with it where anybody has any prayer requests or anything, like we pray for those live, and you know, there's just a lot of people blessed by it. So if that's your thing, stop by. But uh, if not, I have reseller content every day of the week too. So I know yeah. for a fact that's – pretty much your thing if you're watching this show nice. and, and that bible study is, is a lot of fun into it or not anthony can get you into it and he doesn't force it on you but he presents it in a way that it's it's very acceptable yeah it's not it's not you're not sitting there just sitting there because somebody's just reading from a bible and sometimes a lot of people will sit there and be like okay go to fall asleep now, i know we had we had a last minister the last priest that we had um he was from italy and he's trying to read, and he has the English, uh, he has the Italian accent. And it's like, 
Adolf in Tony Seta. Adolf. I'm like, okay. What did he say? <laughs> I mean, he did my son's graduation, and my mother in law sat there and was like, what is he saying? Why? We don't understand what he's saying. 45 minutes later, we're still sitting there ready to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. And, and one thing I like about the way Anthony presents it, and you may take this as a, com a compliment, it, it, I really like it. If Anthony feels led to pray for somebody, dang it, he's going to stop right in the middle of whatever he's saying and he's going to pray for him. And that's, okay. uh, uh, you know, I'm not saying a lot that it's bad that people don't do that. Right. But when you're led, you're led and you just got to get, the, you know, get the word up. You know, it's, that's the way it is. And I really like that. Yeah. You know? I want to say hi to Anna Moore and Mr. Harlan has jumped in right at the end. Harlan, I hopefully you have Officer Dingle set up to go on Fremont Street and fly through the air. I know you guys are planning on doing something crazy like that. I, I think uh, I think Harlan's giving up the reselling gig. He's going to go full time on Fremont. Yeah, yeah. He'll make better money. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, nothing nothing special here. Um, I, I just want to say thank you to every one of you for showing up again. If it was your first time here, thanks for stopping by the first time. We'd love to have you back every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same bat channel. But, uh, but like we said in the past. It wouldn't be a successful show without somebody out there listening, watching. I, so I really appreciate you guys as well. All right, all right, guys. Well, this is uh, was a great show, and I'm glad to have everybody here. I wish Tommy could have came in. Uh, I'll talk to Tommy later, see how he's going. But I know he said he had some plans to do. Uh, we'll find out what's going to happen about tomorrow. Um, I know Tommy will do it, but let's see what's going on and what his plans are. And I want to thank everybody for coming, and we'll see you guys tomorrow on Tommy's channel. Remember, be out there, be strong, always source. It's NASCAR Man 3345. More toys, more fun. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you guys. Thanks, guys. Five, four, three, two.